my shirt. Uh, you know, you cannot see it so well. Let me put my tablet over there. See, I changed my shirt. I acquiesced. I changed it from the blue shirt to the pink shirt. And uh, I've been listening to some shows. I got up this morning a little bit early. And one of the shows I listened to, we had the great Roberto Dunn. The great Roberto Dunn was on the show putting uh, the tiny ma'am, M-A-M, ma'am in his place for basically abusing everyone's wife and girlfriend on the internet. Everyone. He has not missed a beat when it comes to abusing someone's wife or girlfriend. That I know of. I mean, I, I don't know. There could be someone he hasn't abused the person's wife or girlfriend yet. Let me close this door and uh, and then I'm going to get into the, the heart, the beef, the heart of the matter. And then we're going to we're going to go in and uh, we're going to discuss this little ma'am, M-A-M, and the bow tie he was sporting yesterday uh, on this morning's show. He was actually sporting a pink bow tie on his head whilst he was being a tough guy to Roberto Dunn. So let me just change the lighting in here a little bit. And then we're going to go outside and I'm going to start working. But for now, oh yeah, that's much better. For now, um, what we got going here is a tiny ma'am, M-A-M, uh, on a show yesterday, this little, this little man, ma'am, M-A-M, this little ma'am, he has physically threatened so many people. It's There's no way to keep track, number one. Number two, then he backs out of his physical threatening by saying, if, if it was legal, I would do this and I would do that. But he has been offered the legal avenue to get into an actual... MMA ring or boxing ring with myself for sure a legal venue to be able to do what he thinks he can do in his mind in real life and then backed out of it he was even offered as much as 15,000 American dollars to go into that ring and transportation and hotel expenses and if any medical expenses occurred. So this tiny ma'am, M-A-M, who's sporting a pink bow tie now uh, on his head, right here, right across the top of his head, it looks like a pink bow tie to me without my glasses on. Went on to a show this morning at five o'clock this morning or something like that. I don't know. I was sleeping at that time. And he put up, it looks like he's sporting a pink bow tie, his hair, or, or it could be he actually made his hair into a pink bow tie. If that's possible, he put a pink bow tie in his hair. Now, you can check this out on uh, Chi Corsair's show, where he went on to the show to give dating advice. And then he abused Chi Corsair's ex-boyfriend, possible future boyfriend, past boyfriend. Again, his life is not complete. And the reason he does this is because his life is not complete unless he is abusing somebody. So he has, uh, he abused my ex-girlfriend. He abuses the great Roberto Dunn, who stuck up for everybody. He's basically the only man left on YouTube that's still making videos and still, uh, still, he, he's more of a man than most of the other people that profess to be a man from that original group called RRR. They're all a bunch of fucking cowards. But Roberto Dunn is a man of principle. Roberto Dunn stuck up for myself. He stuck up for Dave, and he stuck up for 
basically he stuck up for what was right. Okay, that's basically what Roberto Dunn did. And again, the tiny ma'am, M-A-M, the tiny ma'am, he, 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 he can't get it through his fucking head that no one likes him. But people have just given up trying to push that point across the board. So when, when Roberto came on to the show, he said, you've abused everybody's wife or girlfriend. And, and when he mentioned that you've abused Fazio's girlfriend, the tiny ma'am, he laughs and says, ah, what girlfriend? He doesn't have a girlfriend. Well, what does that matter in real life, whether I have a girlfriend or not? I mean, well, I, but well, here is the point that why I asked that question. The point is, to him, it matters so that he can be abusive. He can put a negative spin on every situation because in his life is so unfulfilled. His life has come and gone and he's not going to leave any lasting memories of him being here in this world other than hate. People will remember him as the most hated person on YouTube. They'll remember him as the most spiteful person on YouTube. They'll remember him as the biggest liar on YouTube. That will be his legacy. Now, I'm going to prove that momentarily, but we want to, whoever's here, and I don't know, I, I don't have my glasses on. Whoever's here, I want to, let me put my glasses on. Look, see, I put the new shirt on today. The new shirt, baby. Sport and the pink shirt. We're going outside to work. Oh, we're going outside to work. Whoa, we have some people here watching. Thank you. So his legacy will be a legacy of negativity. Negativity. Now, in the title, for those of you who are just arriving, um, I, I I don't know. I ha I am subscribed to certain people's channels, and I, I'll watch their videos if I have time. So this morning when I woke up, I listened. Oh God, I, I listened to the Little Mams show, where he said this is what he said. He said the only reason I don't rip Fazio's face off. He, well, he meant me is because it's illegal. Well, in the past, you had a legal venue to get into the ring with me. A legal venue. Somebody was going to pay $15,000 to the winner and 5000 to the loser or something in that area. It probably would have been a lot more. And we were going to videotape the whole thing and all of that. Why didn't you do it then? And that's a legitimate question. I'm not threatening you. I'm just asking you, why didn't you, when you had the opportunity to get into the ring with me, why didn't you do it? It's a legitimate question. Because now, on this morning show, you're running your mouth. The only reason why I didn't rip his fucking face off is what, what you said exactly, your words. You are, your words are the only reason I didn't rip his fucking, or the only reason, that the only thing that's stopping me from ripping Fazio's face off is it's against the law. But, but you had the opportunity to do that and get paid for it. Did you forget about that? Did everybody forget about that? I didn't forget about it. I would have been happy with going into the ring with you and having a legitimate one-on-one -on -one battle. And then, <clears throat> but you wouldn't do that. So why are you still professing to be able to beat the shit out of me when you had the opportunity and you passed it up? And why are you telling people that you can beat up Obama without ever having done so? What makes you think you can beat up uh, Barry? I, I, I mean, maybe you can. Maybe you're like a little, you know, a surprise package that when you get in the ring, you turn into, I don't know, one of those superheroes. I don't know, but I was willing to try that, but you didn't want to do that. But still this morning, you are saying the only reason, the only thing stopping me from ripping Fazio's face off is that it's illegal. 
I don't understand that. But we're going to talk about you being the liar that you are. You are a liar. You are full of deception. You are full of insidious innuendo and hintergedankers. You are the most vicious and vile man on YouTube, bar none, bar none. Now, <clears throat> why are you a liar? <clears throat> Let me read my comments, and then we'll get into why you're a liar. Okay. I, I don't know who Joe Mercado is, M, and I don't know who you are, but yeah, he's also trolling Bama. So why, why are you the most insidious, in my opinion, person on YouTube? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I can prove you're a liar. Absolutely prove you're, you're, you are 100% deception. You are not any, any kind of theoretical person to believe everything that comes out of your mouth. <clears throat> excuse me. Everything that comes out of your mouth is a lie. You have been saying... For three days, Fazio smokes three cigarettes per hour. You said the name Fazio and the fact, in your mind, I smoke three cigarettes per hour. And yet I've done a couple of live streams for 10 hours or more, and no one's ever seen me smoke a cigarette. So now you move over to some bullshit fucking argument that's not provable. When he leaves the screen... To go get tools, he probably smokes a cigarette. But I don't. There's no proof of that. But you say it anyway. You are an insidious scumbag to say things that you cannot prove and that are not true. On or around December 1st, I stopped smoking. I've never smoked another cigarette. I don't intend on smoking another cigarette. And yet, every day on your show, you say, I smoke three cigarettes per hour. And then you go on with more insidious lies and bullshit, half-truths, disgustingly wrong statements that you heard it from a friend or heard it from a reliable source that I smoke three cigarettes a day and you profess this to be the fucking truth when there is no reliable source. There is no person that will, will attest in, in a court of law, in person, in real life. There is nobody that will ever say they saw Fazio smoke three cigarettes per hour. Nobody, ever. But you say it. Somehow this makes you feel more human. And actually what you are proving is that you are less human by definition. Now, another insidious lying scumbag pattern that you refuse to give up is that you heard it from a reliable source that Fazio drinks four bottles of rum a week. Where the fuck do you hear this shit? Where do you hear this shit? From whom? Is there somebody living with me that I don't know about that watches me drink four bottles of rum? No. Do I drink four bottles of rum a week? No. But you put it out there as fact. That's the insidious nature of your sickening so-called human nature. You are a very, very fucking... Um, you realize, you realize that you are an unaccomplished man. You realize now that you've never accomplished anything worthwhile in your life. You realize it's too late to change that. And you realize no matter how hard you try, you're never going to be an accomplished man by, by definition. No one is ever going to say, well, oh, that guy, Matt, look at that man, ma'am, M-A-M. Look at that ma'am over there on the dusty island. He's such a great ma'am. Nobody's ever going to say that. Whereas me, <clears throat> I have a testament all over the United States, wherever I was, to my workmanship, to the quality of my workmanship, what I did. People that remember me 
for doing bizarre, bizarre amounts of work, bizarre amounts of work in a short period of time with given under the circumstances. People remembered me from Michigan from 1989 when I talked to somebody from Michigan about a year ago. Remember when you stuccoed so-and-so's house, you did 700 square feet of stucco on the first floor in one day with, with two tenders. And I didn't have to get mud. Mud was brought to me and they moved my scaffolding around. Yeah, I remember that. So what have you done? What have you ever done? What have you ever accomplished? Nothing. So you are realizing now that the only thing that you can do is excel at hatred. And you do that well. You do that well. Now, as far as the lies, the lies encompass what fucking business is it of yours? Whether or not a person wishes to have an online relationship with another person. What fucking business is it of yours if they want to believe that you can fall in love online? It has happened before. It will happen today and it will happen again in the future. People will meet online and for some bizarre circumstances coming together, they will fall in love, eventually they will meet, and then eventually they will see if the love is real. But what fucking business is it of yours that you have to go, according to what was on Chi's show this morning, what fucking business is it of yours that you had to get in touch with this man whose name is J.C.? What fucking business is this of yours to get in touch with JC and ask him personal questions? It's none of your fucking business. It's none of my business. But the fact that you have to go so far to extend yourself, to get in touch with a third party, for somebody that you've been saying all week you don't even like, that shows you the void in your life, the void of self-confidence, the void of honor. You have no fucking honor. Let's, let's just clear that up right now. You have no fucking honor at all. You're not an honorable person. If, if by definition you were placed on a scale of honor, it would be fucking somewhere in the minus numbers. Someplace so far down, it would be negative and you wouldn't be able to read it. It'd be so far off the fucking scale. Now, I'm going to go to my comments and then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do today. But as far as the lies are concerned, remember just a week and a half ago, you said he has no fucking tools. Another fucking insidious, hateful, vile, jealous fucking series of lies. He has no tools. He doesn't know how to use any fucking tools. He never did this. He... And yet, now for two days, I'm doing 10, 12-hour streams. You see me walk away. You see me come back with a grinder. You see me walk away. You see me come back with different types of clamps. You see me walk away, you see me come back with a 200 amp battery charger, you see me walk away, you see me come back with an extension cord, you see me walk away, I come back with vice grips, you see me walk away, I come back with wheelbarrows, you see me walk away, I come back with the steel to repair the wheelbarrows, you see me walk away, I move the cement mixer, I turn it around, I, I clean the cement mixer. You see me cleaning the cement mixer using six different brushes and scrapers. Yet he has no fucking tools. He has no knowledge of tools. Another insidious, low-class, jealous mental state that you put yourself in to believe this happy horse shit. Now that I have proven that I have tools, that I have the ability to use the tools, now that I have proven that I bought the cement mixer to build the hotel, now, now you have this fucking thing, this threatening thing, this tribunal thing, you're ace in the fucking hole where there's going to be consequences. Now it's another insidious fucking threat. You're ace in the hole. You are the most vile creature that anyone has ever seen. 
you are the most vile person on YouTube. The fact that somebody like Roberto hasn't actually approached you one-on-one, -on -one, which he said he's going to do. He's going to go to Cebu. He's going to go to the PNP on your island. He's going to take some of the PNP police officers to your house, and he's going to confront you verbally one-on-one. -on -one. What are you going to do then? What the fuck are you going to do then? Are you going to be a big tough guy like you are on YouTube? You are not going to do that. You are not a big tough guy. Get that through your fucking head, dude. Roberto Dunn, at the size of Roberto, his military training and his demeanor to me exhibits that Roberto Dunn would kick your fucking ass from Cebu to Brooklyn in about 45 seconds. 30 seconds of that would be chasing you around to, to catch up with you if you decided to have a fight with Roberto Dunn. There is nothing that you could do to Roberto Dunn. A man his size, a man his age, there is nothing you could do to him. Not a fucking thing, except cry. You could cry and he might, he might display some sympathy for you when you fucking got down on your hands and knees and begged him to... And I would... I would bet that Roberto Dunn could slap you into um, into submission without even a closed fist because you are a fucking YouTube coward. You know damn well by threatening, constantly bashing and bantering fucking Barry, you knew that your insidious fucking nature of hate and spite and talking about Barry's girlfriend looking like a monkey, but I didn't say her name. You said that. I said, well, I said his girlfriend looked like a monkey, but I didn't say her name. You knew that Barry would snap and threaten you. You knew that. That's where you get your fucking nut off. That is where, that is why you get your fucking nut off. You get your fucking nut off by abusing other people and having them retaliate. You're going to get your fucking nut off for the rest of your fucking life just like that because you have never done anything worthwhile. So because you have never done anything worthwhile, that means I don't have plans for a fucking hotel. That means I don't have permits because you don't have them. I don't have them. Because you can't use fucking tools, that means I can't use tools. No. So now... For three months or four months, you're saying he doesn't know anything about tools. He doesn't know a fucking thing about tools. He knows nothing about tools. But then when I show you I have tools, now you come up with this fucking tribunal thing and you're racing the hole. See how, the, see how it changes? It changes so that you can always be on top somehow. But you are a fucking loser. You're a fucking loser by definition. The people that come on my channel and troll me, you, under fucking whatever names you come on, if you do come on under different names and troll me, you're not going to change who I am. I am a licensed, legitimate general contractor. For 38 fucking years, I've been a licensed contractor. I did own excavation companies. I did own cranes. I did own barges. I did own backhoes. You have never owned a fucking thing except the fact that everybody is in agreement on one thing. This is what you own. You're an insidious, jealous little fucking ma'am, M-A-M. And then you have the fucking balls, the balls to go on She's show and to make your hair into a fucking pink bow tie while you're being a tough guy to Roberto. Now, anybody that hasn't seen that, go to the one hour and two minute mark on She's newest show, whatever the name is. I don't remember the name. And you're going to see this insidious little motherfucker. He's got his hair in, with hairspray on in a pink bow tie. He looks like he sprayed his fucking hair with, with hairspray and made a pink bow tie. It, it goes up like this. He looks just like a pink bow tie. Is that the universe depicting you as a duplistic two-faced fucking fraud? Or was, was, did you do that intentionally? Did you put that pink bow tie in your hair 
at the one hour and two minute mark. Go to Chi show. Go there now and come back and tell me the guy doesn't have his fucking hair doodadded up with a fucking, like a pink bow tie. So is he, is it like, uh, or was that the universe projecting what you really are? A little girly ma'am, M-A-M. What, what is it? I'll read my comments, then I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself too with your fucking tribunal. So let's see what we have here. Saw your video when you went inside Napa Auto Parts in Florida. You're friends with the owner. Yes, I am. I I have not only am I friends with the owner, but I've been friends with the owner since 1993. <clears throat> Sir Villana Mitchell, Sir Villain, Sir Villain, uh, let's, see, let's see what we have. Sir Villain, Servilana, Servilana Mitchell. He's a very sick man. Richard Howe, are you okay? I'm worried about you. I've been watching you since you started. Richard Howe, do yourself a favor. Don't worry about me. Jim Bob, hello, good morning. Richard Howe, I don't understand about what other people are saying. I don't care what anybody says. I just see what I see, and you are okay, but no fighting. We are too old. No, because he doesn't stop. He needs to stop. He needs to understand that if he's going to fucking live and, and able to enjoy anything in his fucking life, he has to stop abusing other people. But, but it's personal now. Uh, Richard Howe, because to answer your question, it's personal now because now the insidious little fucking ma'am, M-A-M, is now threatening something with some sort of tribunal to have me put in jail or thrown out of the Philippines. Now we're making it personal. Okay, so I don't have to stop paying attention to what he says. He is publicizing that he's going to put me in jail or have me thrown out of the Philippines, which I don't believe. But why say such shit? The same shit that he said that I smoke three cigarettes per hour. That's a lie. The same shit he said that I drink four bottles of rum a week. That's a fucking lie. And the same shit with this tribunal. That's a fucking lie. But why does he do it? Because he is a fucking monumental loser when it comes to reality. That's why he does it. Thank you for your comment. I am the ugliest person I know, but I know there is one Filipino girl that will love me. I feel lucky. Flywoods. At least he didn't bear his ass again. That's true. That was fucking... Remember when he... Pulled his pants down and he shot cheese whiz out of his ass like Spider Man spins a web flywoods. Remember that? Lewis Pagan Punks, Mike, the narcissist must be put in his place. Take no prisoners. We, well, we don't do that, Lewis Pagan Punks. Thank you for stopping by. Obet, the OG would mess him up. He is also a Filipino national, says Jim Bob. It's not whether or not, well, I agree with you, Jim Bob. First of all, Obet, I, I don't know how big Obet is, but I do know how small the Mam Sir is, the Mam Sir man, okay? He's not a big man. Now, he also professes that I'm five foot three. I'm not five foot three. I'm close to five foot seven, thereabouts. I'm not 300 pounds. I'm about 220 pounds, maybe 215. Why does he profess this bullshit? Everything is an over-exaggeration. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my new shirt. I changed my shirt. I got tired of people bitching about my blue shirt. I have on my new shirt that's going to be for grinding. And also it shows you my physique. Yeah? It shows you the physique that I have that I'm not a frail man by any means. So what I'm going to do is I have my... I'm going to put on a hat today. I think I'll wear the yellow hat. And then here's what I, my plan. So you're going to watch me. Another thing. 
He's so concerned about my foot, the wounds on my foot. I caught the... Why do you fucking care? I've been to the doctors. I've explained this to people. I don't, first of all, I don't need to explain it to you. I don't give a fuck. I did what I can do. The doctors have done what they can do. I'm going to have to live with this until the, whatever chemical was in, injected into my foot through, the, through this Chinese welding rod leaves my system. It's just that simple. It's problematic, but two cultures have been done at the hospital and all the blood work has been done twice. Nothing comes back, anything. I don't have diabetes for you people that think I have diabetes. I don't have any kind of blood problems. I don't have kidney or liver problems. I don't even have high blood pressure. My blood pressure is 120 over 80. And the fucking guy says, I lied about it even after I showed it. Everything is a fucking lie. And one thing that's not a lie is that Kevin Tuttle has explained what the rules are, and he's pissed about this. He has to leave the Philippines, and he may or may not be able to come back right away. That is fucking playing heavy on his little fucking brain. So there's not much room in there for anything but hate, because right now he's in a really bad position where he has to leave the Philippines because he fucked up, and he may or may not be able to come back. But more than that, <clears throat> he's also made enemies before he even gets to his other island in Southeast Asia. He's already made videos that he may throw out his tenants. He may throw out his brother. He may sell the house. He doesn't owe anybody any resolution to, to the situation there. But he already projected this before he even got there. So when he gets there, well, he has his, he's going to have problems waiting for him, for him when he gets there because he's too fucking stupid to keep his mouth shut about what's on his mind. All right, so here's what I'm going to do today. After I read these comments, I'm going outside. Did I try colloidal silver? No, I, I have this. I have this, which is similar to colloidal silver. It's it's not colloidal silver, but it, it's similar. It's called silver sulfur diazine. And I have multiple I, I have that, that that tube is empty. This tube is almost empty. And I have um another tube in here. So I have plenty of this stuff silver sulfur diazine. I have plenty of this stuff. I put on the the doctor the doctor said slather it on heavy and when I put it on it it seems to kill some of the pain and it seems to be healing. So I, I haven't tried colloidal silver. I don't think you can I don't know if you could get that here or not, but that's a good suggestion. Something I have not tried. Maybe I should try that. Maybe I should look for it, but it's not easy getting stuff here in the Philippines. Look at what's happening with my Lazada order that was supposed to be here by the 6th. Today's the 15th. It's still not here. That's 10 days after the projected delivery date. The projected delivery... So getting shit delivered to you here is a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. I have the original email. Reminds me of Star Trek when Captain Picard always pulls his shirt down so you so it gets the ruffles out of it. When the projected delivery date for my gizmo, for my gadgets, was between the 2nd and the 6th. And I agreed and I paid, well, I agreed to the order. And wh where is it? Then on the 5th, it says 6th to 15th. Now, today's the 15th. Where's my shit? Did I get a message? I'll take a look. But it should be the message came last time at 5 o'clock in the morning. So do I have a message here? No. No message. No messages. So 
Now it's the 15th is going to come and go. But thanks for the colloidal silver. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a good judge of people. You are a good person. Don't stress so much. You are a, a okay guy. Don't be a product of your environment. Make your environment be a product of you. Good information there. Thank you, R. Garlic will clean your blood. I eat a lot of garlic. I eat a lot of garlic. I eat a lot of golf. Passport TV. Lewis Pagan Ponce. M. Jim Bob. Thank you very much, all of you, for stopping by. And uh, there was another person that was here. Flywoods. Thank you, Flywoods. Last night, you guys embellished me with a stupid amount of super chat. Some people did that. Thank you very much. I'm really concerned. Passport, as Richard says. Okay. Eat a lot of raw garlic. And even fill your socks with raw onions and three days straight of fasting. It could help bacteria. Wow. I can't put socks on. That It hurts the top of the, the foot. Louis Pagenpot says, here in the States, but Passport, I never heard of this. If I had a computer, I would be Googling all of this shit up. But I, I, I still don't have email, Skype, or or um, or Facebook. So I, I really can't look. I guess I could look it up. But being doing 12-hour live streams, I, you can't change the screens on this tablet that I know of. Maybe you can. I just don't know how. As Richard says. So thank you very much, Richard Howe. Uh, you're a good guy. Don't be make. The, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to prove the little mem sir wrong again. And I want to do it every day. So every day from now on, I'm going to live stream Michael Fazio working as a man should work in life and that I can still do it at my age and that I enjoy doing it just to prove that it's possible for a 65 year old man to do physical labor not under duress or not under stress, but to enjoy doing the work itself, which pisses off the mem, sir mem, M-A-M, because he's incapable of doing anything tool-wise. So because he's incapable of doing anything physical, except theoretical fighting inside his fucking head from behind a keyboard on another island, a thousand or 7,000 miles away from people, that's the only thing he's capable of fantasized theoretical fighting because when it came down to push fucking comes to shove he fucking backed down i don't really like to talk about that much but when push came to fucking shove in front of 35 fucking people he backed down okay take my word for it let's see i do i have i have the gauze m i have the gauze on top I have the gauze on top, and then I have it taped up. Now, I'm also going to have a, I also have on top, on top of the, on top of the foot dressing, I'm going to show you how I put this gizmo here. It goes under my toes, and then this protects the top of my foot. And these metal brackets on the side, I tape them around my my foot for protection in case I drop a hammer or a little piece of metal or anything. It'll protect my foot. And then this part gets taped around the calf muscle. So I, I am going to wear some protection. I did put my boots on this morning, but um, it's just a little too tight for my boots yet. Thank you. Extended fasting helps tissue heal and cell rejuvenation. That may very well be true. Uh, I, But the problem with fasting right now is I'm going to be working outside. And whenever I fast for more than one day, I get weak when I'm working outside. And I got a lot of work to do. I, I'm not eating... I'm eating one meal a day. Yesterday I had one 
one and a half cups of rice. And now, before I leave the house, I'll have about six pieces of pineapple. And then uh, I won't eat anything again until dinner time. So fasting is just not good while working with power tools and being tired and weak. It could be a combination of age, could be a combination of the heat, but I, I can't do the fasting and work outside with power tools. I get weak and when you get weak, you get sloppy. So I know what you're saying, but I know my limitations. Uh, Passport says extend, okay, Lewis Pagenpons. Flywood says, Lewis Pagenpons, here in the fills, postal times are three or four months if you're lucky to get it at all. That's correct. 12 weeks minimum to get a letter to get one of my credit cards to the Philippines, one of them, what took 13 weeks. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Fast on the day off from work. That I can do. John Escape, welcome, John. Hello, my friend. Big Kevin No Bull. I wonder if that's really Big Kevin No Bull. Big Kevin No Bull, you've been offline for a long time. I think that you're not the actual Big Kevin No Bull. Good morning. John Escape, hello, Kevin. Yeah, got to be careful when fasting and doing heavy lifting and working with tools. I will, I know, have, I know, I know. M1203, M1203 gave me not one. This is a big shout out to um, Kenny Ford, Michael McFarlane, and M1203 Core came online last night just before I was getting ready to go to sleep and slammed me. The three of them slammed me with Super Chat. Thank you very much, M1203. I'm not going to bang a pot now. Big Kevin says he's been sick. Well, that sucks because my foot injury sucks. I know that. So sorry to hear that, Big Kevin. Uh, Pepita is fasting. <laughs> oh, that was cold, M1203. All right, so here's what's going to happen. That was, that was fucking cold. I read that without realizing what it said. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have read that or laughed. But if... But by reading it and not knowing what it said, it, it was not funny. You know, I, I, I know my dog, Z2, is fasting now since 1995. So I'm going to go outside. I'm going to point. I'm going to set up my workstation completely different than I had it last night. Uh, I have the batteries on the machine charging with a 6-amp charger. Even though I had the batteries, I cooked, C-O-O-K-E-D, I cooked the old battery yesterday, which might bring it back to full power life for a few months. Um, it might not, because when I tried to start the machine yesterday, it wouldn't start, and the new battery should have been charged up where I bought the battery from. I asked them to charge it. They said they would, and apparently they forgot. So I had to charge that battery, and then the other battery, which was maintaining 13 volts, but, oh, batteries, to explain the concept of batteries. Richard from Napa Auto Parts, the owner of Napa Auto Parts in Key Largo, him and I talked about batteries years ago. That man is a genius when it comes to battery memory and what a battery will do and why a battery will do what it does. It will read 13 volts, but it won't have cold cranking amps. Batteries are rated on cold cranking amps, CCA. Bat this is another thing. People say, I don't know what I'm talking about. He is correct, Richard. Batteries are rated CCA, cold cranking amps. Richard explained to me 
that a battery can still read 13.2 volts or 14 volts, but it'll only have 100 cold cranking amps. In other words, each cell in the battery is a good cell. However, it won't have full power in the cell. So when you go to crank it, instead of having 1,200 cold cranking amps, it'll just have 100 cranking amps and it won't turn the starter over. So the new battery, which is 17 cells, was also reading 14 volts. One is reading 14, one is reading 13. Theoretically, it should have started the, that motor, but it did not. So I took my Super Duty 200 amp charger and I cooked the old battery. It's called cooking the battery. And what it does is it boils the plates and the oxidation on the plates is what prevents the battery from giving you full power when you cook it you knock that oxidation off it falls down to the bottom of the battery cells it allows it and it's like um it's it's like this if you go out in the sun without a shirt on you're going to get suntan or burned. If you shed your jacket or your shirt and let it fall to the floor, the sun is going to be able to enter into your cells. It's like that. So it's it's like having a jacket or a piece of cloth over the face of each cell plate. There's thousands of plates, but when you cook it, you boil off the outside oxidation which allows the chemical reaction to occur. So Richard from Napa Auto Parts and I talked about this endlessly because I buy a lot of batteries. I bought, I had three 60 batteries in my boat. I had a 60 battery in my open water, open uh, center console. I had a 60 battery in my backhoe two two of them in the backhoe i had one in my truck so i i bought a lot of batteries so i know a little bit about batteries and the batteries are just not giving me the power that they want now after i cook the battery and you can look this up online whenever you see these commercials online rejuvenate your old battery well what it what it is is basically cooking the cell plates you are going to boil but you can't do it with a 12 amp charger you got to have a 40 amp 50 amp you have to put it on 40 or 50 amps and when you look in the battery you're going to see bubbles coming up that's called cooking the battery and if i did it long enough and it worked it should have the power to start the machine today and if I didn't do it long enough or it's not going to work, then I'm just going to have to go out and get another battery. And that's that's the bottom line, because one is new and one is old. And the one the one that's new was replaced because of. Uh, well, I'll I'll just I'll talk about that in, in an entirely new video in the morning, maybe tomorrow morning, I will teach you guys something about batteries something that you have no idea how dangerous batteries can be. I mean, no idea at all. You've heard about it. You've seen stories about it. But what I'm going to show you, I might do it this afternoon. What I'm going to show you is going to be, you won't believe, you won't believe what I'm going to show you about the, the battery that's out of the machine. You won't believe what happened. And if you do believe it, then you'll understand how dangerous a fucking lead oxide battery can be and why they went over to a different kind of battery in aircraft technology back in the 50s okay so john big kevin i've been john escape whoa my god it hits me up with major super chat and john escape i did have a question for you thank you very much john escape do you have any idea when that water distiller is going to be here, have you shipped it to Leyte yet? It's a serious question because I don't think, I think my biggest problem here now with my foot is that this distilled water is not 
100% distilled water anymore. I think they've changed it to 80% distilled water because now it tastes different than it did two years ago. Now, I could buy a different brand, but I have 15 bottles of distilled water. I don't think it's just... So can you answer that question? Because if you... I know you bought a water distiller. I know you're sending it to Leyte, but has it been shipped out yet? Because I have to do something different for this foot. And the only thing different I did for this foot in New York was I drank distilled water from my water distiller that I made myself. So I'll wait for the answer for that. And then I'm going to have to make a decision to buy, an, buy a water distiller locally. Because if it hasn't been shipped to the Philippines, that means it's 13 more weeks, minimal, plus another six or seven weeks to get here. I could be waiting almost half a year. Now, I know you, you bought it in good faith, and I know you wanted to ship it out, but for me to wait another half a year with my foot the way it is, I have to try to get distilled water and know that it's distilled and purified myself. So I'm going to ask you to give me a response to that. But the shill is in the house. Welcome. Welcome, Jay. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, passport's on his way out with the bike. I'll be listening. Richard Howe. Passport, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for saying hello. Richard Howe, I'm 68 and have a long resume. But at our age, we can only do what we can do. I was a prize fighter in my early 20s. Today at my age, I can't whip you or anyone else, probably. That's probably a fucking lie. Richard Howe is probably still kick-ass at age 68. Thanks for the comment, Richard. I just fasted a whole barbecue chicken, and damn, he was fast. Thank you. Oh, God. What, how I miss that eating food, real food. The shell, doesn't that cement mixer have a pull start? Yes, it does, shell. It has a, it's a diesel engine. It has a decompression lever on the side, and I, I started, I did not start it up. It, it was started up on, at, the warehouse for me, it runs fine. It has a pull start. It does not have an electric start. Hey, Mike, where is Scott Del Fuego? Well, Scott Del Fuego, um, to be honest, he was doxxed by this fucking man, sir, with the fucking pink bow tie in his hair. And he has disappeared off the internet. So, man, sir, with the fucking pink bow tie hairdo, Doxed Scott Del Fuego for his actual real fucking name, the actual place that Scott worked, and then he went so far as to speculate on how much money Scott Del Fuego made, and I haven't heard from Scott since then. Hopefully, hopefully Kevin Tuttle, who is also a police officer, will have done what he said. And when Mamsar gets to America, the federales will be waiting for him at the airport. Because that's what Kevin Tuttle has speculated, that Kevin Tuttle said he reported Mamsar to the authorities for doxing a police officer or a federal agent, and that he's going to have to be questioned about that. John Escape. It's in Jacksonville. It's on its way. So that means it's still... Okay, thank you for the information. Dusty Island Man, the rat thing. Okay, so here's... I'm going to... Thank you very much, John Escape. I, I'm going to order. I, I, I can't wait 20 weeks. I cannot. Uh... I'll just have two water distillers working... You know, working... The, working. I, I, I have to get... It's the only thing I haven't done to cure my foot. I, I, can't, I can't stress enough. When I went to New York, the one thing that I did in New York that I'm not doing now is I drank, I made my own distilled water with my own water distiller. And um, I still have that water distiller outside. It needs to, I, I need to, I bought a, I bought a fan 
a, a, a 220 volt fan that goes on. My the fan in the water distiller took a shit, but it still boils the water. I, I could try making mine work, but I need I need to get that water. I need to make water distiller. So I'm going outside. Thank you, Richard. Out. What he said. We all need to try to. I would. I would be. There is no getting along with that guy, Richard. If you you followed this shit, the man wakes up every fucking morning and has to abuse somebody. He has to abuse somebody. He can't fucking wake up. Why is he on Cheese Corsair's show? Why is he contacting Cheese Corsair's boyfriend or ex-boyfriend? For what fucking reason? Because the little motherfucker, Mam Sar fucking sissy boy, is such a miserable motherfucker that he has to get involved with some sort of negative activity every fucking day. There is no getting along with him. The world will be a better place when he shuts his fucking YouTube channel down. Oh, he did that already. Didn't he remove his fucking channel and all his videos and all his subscriber base? Fuck me. I forgot about that. Man pushed the wrong button. Kills his own channel. <laughs> Crooked mouth motherfucker. Okay, so I'm going outside. I'm going to set set up the uh, tablet. You're going to see me start to take tools out of my storage unit. I'm going to set up a different platform to cut pieces of one eighth inch sheet metal that I'm going to weld onto the front of the wheelbarrows. That's my first project. If the sun comes out, which right now it's still cloudy, but it looks like it's going to break through. If the sun comes out after I get those metals cut, because I do have to cut the metals and it makes a severe amount of mess. If the sun comes out, then I will switch hats, so to speak, and I will mix, I will show you how to mix a high-grade paint with turpentine, not paint thinners. And I will show you how to mix it at 25% is what you want to put it on for a first coat. Even though that sounds too much, it always says mix your paint with 10% then That's not enough. It's just not enough. So... Uh, I'm going to take the tablet outside now, and I'm going to put it on the stand. I had it on yesterday, and you're going to watch me appear and disappear while I get the tools, in including the grinder. I have to change grinders, I think, from yesterday, or I have an internal short in the Milwaukee grinder, and the when it was raining, it was shorting me out with the cord, which is probably not a good thing to use a grinder while it's giving you 220 volt shock. So I have another 110 volt grinder. And that's what I'm going to do. So you guys are going to be prepared to watch for a while. Don't watch for a while. Say what you want. Please keep it clean. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. Ty Cobb, hello, my friend, John Ty Cobb. He was a real, Ty Cobb was a real man. He was a, a real baseball player. We all know that. Well, th I knew that, but I never mentioned it. Thank you very much, John Escape. A, a man's man. He, he was a famous baseball player. Can I tell you something? You need to find a Filipino girl that will love you. Turn off the negativity and live happily with a girl that loves you. Thank you. I want a girl that knows how to swim. I have talked to a hundred women in the last year. None of them know how to swim. None of them wish to learn how to swim, Richard Howe. And I will not date another woman that doesn't know how to swim or doesn't wish to learn how to swim. That is going to be a prerequisite. When I go swimming, I want to have a woman with me swimming. When I go scuba diving, I want that girl to learn how to go scuba diving. I will not date a woman that doesn't know how to swim. 
I will not date a woman that doesn't want to learn how to do scuba diving unless I change my mind right now today. That's why I don't have a girlfriend. None of these women here in the Philippines that I have talked to and or dated swim. None of them want to learn how to swim. When they say they can swim, it means they can push themselves off one side of the pool and go to the other side. Do not give me dating advice because I'll tell you what, Richard Howe, and I'm being serious as a fucking heart attack. Do you want to date a woman that doesn't cook? Would you date a woman that doesn't clean? Probably not. Unless you're rich. But you probably wouldn't want to date a woman that doesn't clean and doesn't cook. Or, or, and maybe one that doesn't shower. You have your prerequisites. My prerequisite is when I go swimming, I go swimming alone because my, any of the women I've ever dated don't swim. They don't want to go in more than two or three feet of water. Now, if you think that's unrealistic for me to want to have a woman that I can go scuba diving with or swim with, that's your opinion. But please don't give me dating advice. I am old enough and secure enough in my own skin to know that if I date a new woman, a different woman than anybody I've dated in the past, she will not only know how to swim, but it will be a goal of hers to learn scuba diving. That's a prerequisite. So until I meet that woman, and I, it's the first question I ask a woman, the absolute first. If, if I am someplace and somebody says that girl is single, I ask them three questions. How many children do you have? If they tell me they have children, the uh, interview is over. I don't want to meet a woman with children. I, I just don't want to. I don't need that in my life. I don't need to take on the responsibility of someone else's children. Call it selfish, call it time, uh, consumption of my time, call it whatever you want. I don't wish to meet a woman with children. First question, do you have children? Yes, conversation's over. Second question, are you single? Well, I'm single, but I was married. Conversation's over will not date a woman in the Philippines that was married. So are you single? Second question. If the second question comes back negative, I, yes, I'm single. No, I'm not married. Then we ask the third question, can you swim? And if they can't swim, do you wish to learn how to swim? No. If they say no, conversation's over. Next I will wait another week or two days or a month before I meet another woman. And when I talk to another woman, I'll ask them those three questions. Do you have children? Yes. Conversation's over. Do you, are you married? Not are you single? Are you single? They say yes. But have you ever been married? Uh, well, yes, I'm married. Conversation's over. Nobody in their right fucking mind Knowing the laws of the Philippines should get into a relationship like that. It's problematic at best. It could be catastrophic at worst. Now, if you have somewhere between, God bless you. But, but to get involved with a woman that has children and possibly is married or is married is a long shot. If it works out, that's great. If it doesn't work out, it's problematic. So I, I choose to avoid the possibility of that problem in advance. So please don't give me dating advice. Richard Howe, I don't know if you were married your whole life. I have dated enough women to know that what I choose to look for in a woman is what would make me happy. Paige High, Dr. Paige High, thank you for stopping by. Let's see. He's not unhappy. He's having the time of his life. I, I enjoy the shit out of this. Thank you, Paige. <laughs> he understands the psychology of it all. And from, from a doctor's point of view, I enjoy this. I enjoy the, the bantering. I don't enjoy being abused. And uh, I don't enjoy ha being lied about. So, John Escape. Hello, Happy New Year. Thank you, Paige. Thank you so much.
Paige High has been a major, a major watcher and commenter and also a major contributor in Super Chat to my channel. We thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Paige High. Paige High is He's a very nice man. And and this piece of shit, Go Go Bobo Sister, thank you for shit canning Go Go Bobo Sister. I don't need whatever that thing is. I don't need it on my channel. Somebody don't mind if a woman has eight children and is still married, just saying. That's true. Okay, I will. Oh, I was going to go. I got to get outside. I will never give you advice about women or dating. You know more than I will probably ever know about Filipinas. I live here. I will tell you one of the things they tell you at the embassy before you go to the Philippines, there's, there's some things they tell you at the embassy. In New York City on 5th Avenue and 40-something Street, I think it's 47th Street, I went to the embassy and they have a, a room. It's a room. It's a uh, tourist. First of all, that it's a beautiful embassy. It, it's really nice inside there. It's not some, it's on Fifth Avenue. So that should tell you a lot. So you go there and you fill out your application for your visa and all of that. And then there was, they don't recommend to go to this room. It was just a room. I saw the name of tourist, uh, Philippines, tourist, tourism, something like that. And there was one man sitting in the room by himself. And I walked in, told him I was going to the Philippines. This is in December of 2013. And he said, uh, there's some things you should know. Some of the things, one thing you should know at that time is do not go to the island of Mindanao at that time in 2013 he was very clear on that until you're familiar with the philippines don't go to that island because there's some beautiful there are some beautiful beaches there because we talked about beaches and the beautiful beaches are in beautiful locations but at that time they may not have been safe for americans that's the tourism director of tourism for the philippines second thing you need to know is don't flash around, don't don't wear jewelry. Don't flash your cash or wear jewelry around in the Philippines. And that's true. And the third thing is, don't get involved with a married woman. Okay? I mean, now they say it just like that. And there was reasons for that. And the reasons are comp complicated, could be complicated. So if you want to avoid problems in the Philippines, don't flash jewelry or money around don't go to the island of Mint because there are some beautiful beaches. But at that time, some of those places were not tourist friendly for white people from America, more specifically than anything else. So I took the man's advice. And so far, I've been doing OK. I did meet a woman that said she had no children and I dated her for a year and a half. And then on the second Christmas, she said, can you give me 10,000 pesos aside from normal, you know, gifts? And I said, for what? And she says, I want to buy my children a phone. She, for a year and a half, she hid the fact she had children. Okay, so that's what you get here in the Philippines. You get a little bit of deception. Louis Pagenpont's. It seems pretty awkward to me that none of those kids are with her. I'm thinking somebody has forbidden them to even visit. No, I think those kids visited the house. I, I think they did that in the past. Okay, Richard Howe, thank you. Silver Diamond, do you have email Dr. Page? Forget about getting Dr. Page High's email. That Silver Diamond is a scumbag for asking Dr. Page High for his email address. He doesn't he doesn't have a channel. He doesn't have any fucking content. He comes to my channel. That probably is the insidious little scumbag liar that is gonna um try to get Dr. Page High's email. Not gonna happen. So and for what fucking reason do you want his fucking email? 
What reason do you want his fucking email? You can say whatever you have to say in the comments section. Silver Diamond. Another scumbag on YouTube. I have so had it with trolls. Okay. Going outside. Need the keys. Need my bucket of tools. Going to take this outside. Notice I changed my shirt today. I put on a new shirt. Got tired of hearing the little mem sir fella fucking bitch about my shirt. Take a good close up look at it. I pull it down like this. So that you uh, take the wrinkles out of it, like Captain Picard does on Star Trek. They pull the shirt down. Can't pull it too fucking hard. It'll rip. Okay, I'm on my way outside. I'm going to move outside. Moving outside. Moving, moving, moving. Walking, walking, walking. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me show you my shorts before I start. Those are my shorts. I'll, I'll, I'll bring this outside. Yeah, baby. I have the same filthy fucking shorts that I've had on for the last two days because I'm doing dirty work. Should I clean my shorts every night? Only a fucking fool. Only a sissy. A ma'am, sir. A little girly boy would change their shorts every day to do the same type of work. Three days is a reasonable time to have your dirty shorts on. I think three days is reasonable. At the end of today, I'll probably wash my shorts because then I'll be done with all the dirty work. Okay, I got the water here. I got here. It's tough getting in and out of here. Got to get that cement mix made. I'll make a nice cement stoop. And... And here we go. Okay, so the first setup that I'm going to show you is where I was working yesterday. Uh, oh, I have to get um, this bracket here that holds the actual tablet. It's a tablet bracket I made. Hello, Mama. Okay, this is the bracket I made to hold the tablet and the GoPro. Now I'm going to put this down here. And, and then I'm going to see what you can see. Oh, i got to put my glasses on. Okay. So theoretically, you can see the workbench. Okay, you can see the workbench. Now, what you're going to see is me appearing and disappearing while I get the tools that I'm going to be working with, which are going to be three different types of clamps, wood clamps and metal clamps. Uh, I'm going to try the, the Milwaukee grinder again. I'm going to try that again because it's not raining, so I won't get shorted out. That's the better of the two grinders because the shield on the grinder is rotates, you, you know, easily changes direction. And then I have to get out electric for 110 volts. I have the 220 electric out already. And then I have to cut metal for the front of the wheelbarrow. So let me show you what I did yesterday before I get the tool so you know what I'm cutting. So I have to make... Wapu! Wapu! Salamat! Ah... Uh. Uh. I have to make four pieces of metal. This is one eighth inch metal. I have to make four pieces like this, or almost like this. This still has to be contoured a little bit. This 
I can take the tablet up and show you where these go. In fact, it's not plugged in yet, so that's not problematic. So let me do that now. I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the tablet around so it's facing the ground. Well, so that when when I bring it over to when I bring it over to the work area, you'll see it. Okay. So yesterday I made one piece. This is one piece here. The the reason I'm doing this is to reinforce the front edge of this wheelbarrow. This one here, this wheelbarrow, the sun is out. It's going to get painted today. I'll tell you that right now. It's going to reinforce. So one goes there, and then another one goes on this side over here. When I get that welded in place, tacked and welded here, I'll weld it. I'll beat this into submission here to get it flat with the... Uh, I'll beat the wheelbarrow back out to make it flush up here. So I'll tack weld this in place. And then I'm going to weld it down here. Bam, you know, like half inch, then skip some in half. And I'm going to fill up this whole crack here. All this crack is going to get filled up with paint. After I get this piece on here, then I'm going to take another piece and put it on the outside here, like this, outside those pieces. So this will be the support in the front here, and they'll meet like that in the middle. And then there'll be another piece that goes over that. So I will basically have, for about 8 or 10 inches of the front of the wheelbarrow, I will have an 8 inch by 1 quarter inch thick support. Uh, nose of the wheelbarrow because this wheelbarrow was never used really for moving concrete so what happens is everybody dumps the concrete over they dump the wheelbarrow they dump the wheelbarrow they dump the wheelbarrow and from that this is what happens to the wheelbarrow it hap it cracks the front of the wheelbarrow see where it's cracked here so this this section here this section here, this goes on here, similar to that. And then I'll put another strap around the outside here. So this one is going to be in the front here, like this. And I'll, be, I'll, I'll beat this down to where it contours and round around the outside of the front of the wheelbarrow. And then I'll take another piece of metal and put it on top of that, like this. So that what I'm going to end up with is one, one eighth of an inch of metal here, one eighth of an inch of metal here, plus the thickness of what's left of the rolled bead on the cement mixer. So the front of this wheelbarrow will now be reinforced so that you can dump it another few thousand times on the nose without the wheelbarrow cracking further because this cracks when you use a wheelbarrow, if I left this like this, in a few months, the wheelbarrow would be split up the middle like that. Fixable, but problematic. So it's pre, I'm pre-clean, I'm pre-fixing stuff. Now, I've already done supports here like this. Okay, this, I, this tablet, you just run your hand over the edge of the tablet and functions so this is already done I did this back in the 1980s I took two two galvanized 10 penny nail uh, 10 inch nails and put them on this vertical support here so because this always bends this this vertical support on the side of a wheelbarrow this is always bending and what happens is it collapses and in the back, I did the same thing. So that's that's already done. I'll turn it around and show you the repair I did on the back. This is always collapsing also. This vertical, this, uh, this, uh, the, the foot, 
the foot for the wheelbarrow. This always breaks right here. So before it broke, I put galvanized bolts in there and uh, welded them in place on both sides. So what I, basically what you're going to watch me do is I'm going to set up I'm going to set up a piece of plywood. I was working up here. It's a little bit high to work with from up here. And this, and uh, I, I'd rather work down lower because it's there's more control over the uh, over the grinder itself. My beautiful pepper plant got the shit beat out of it from that windstorm. Look at this. Look at this. They're all gone. It blew the peppers off the tree. Mayan Buntag. Salamat. Um, it blew the peppers, right? It blew all the flowers off the tree, and it blew all the peppers. There's a flower. There's a new one coming up this morning. Yeah, baby. So uh, those are hot. And then I have to charge the batteries. So that's my that's my morning what I have to do this morning. I have to make one more piece like this, finish making the pieces for the front of that wheelbarrow over there, and then I, I have paint stored in the back there. I have a gallon of paint and, and some turpentine, and here's my stock material that I have for the, uh, for the rest of the banding. There is some oil-based paint that's white, I don't know what I'm going to do with that because the wheelbarrows are going to go yellow to match the horse that's behind the wheelbarrow. And then I have another workstation in the back there. I don't think I have any more equipment on the back workstation. Uh, no, I just have, uh, ah, here's the nest. The mama, the mama hen has been roosting here for about a year and a half. And these, this is what's left of the chicks. From this week's, or this week's, this week's hen laying, there's seven chicks. They just walked away about three days ago, four days ago. So um, this stanchion got to get painted all yellow also, except for the deck. The deck gets white. And then I have to clean up this tarpaulin. This is the tarpaulin I will probably use... For the, uh, I may use this for the cement mixer because it's white, it stands out. This came off of something from Markey's Marine Service. It came off a jet ski delivery back in the 1990s. That's how long that tar is old. So uh, here's my workstation, the, the plywood from the Chinese plywood that I always talk about. The Chinese plywood, look at this. This plywood is three years old. Watch what I can do with my fingers. Two fingers. Dust. Two more fingers. Dust. Over here. Dust. Garbage. All garbage. Chinese plywood, three years old. Three years old and painted with an oil-based paint. And look at what I can do with my fingers. And you think it's easy living here buying this crap and you pay $20 a sheet for it and it lasts three years? Look. That's the, that's the end result of a $20 piece of plywood after three years. And you know what this is called? It's called marine plywood, Chinese marine plywood. You don't you think I'm kidding you? Here's the next sheet right here. Watch what I can do. There it is. There's your three-year-old Chinese marine plywood. There it is right there. That's three-quarter inch marine plywood. Chinese three-quarter inch marine plywood. There you go. There it is, three years old. What do I have to replace it with? Another sheet of Chinese marine plywood, because this is all they sell here. They have you at a disadvantage. You use that shit for forms one time, it pulls the outside skin off, so you have to paint it. 
So now you have to pay $5 to paint each side of the plywood in time and materials. And then you can use it three times and then throw the sheet away. You are at such a disadvantage here. It's unbelievable. Okay, so I'm going to read the comments. I'm going to open up the... I'm going to put the... Yeah, this is from a guy that doesn't have any fucking tools or knowledge of tools. Here is my brand new cement mixer. Here it is, right here. Fucking asshole. Saying the cement mixer is used. Here, let me show you how. You undog it, here's the dog. Have to hold, you gotta get away from this wheel when you take that dog off. Cause empty, it'll break your arm. Full, it'll break your arm. So when you, I have my knee, my leg up against the, the wheel so it can't move. I'm gonna take the dog off. This is a dog. This dog goes into a gear right here. A gear like this. And it stops the cement mixer from moving. So with the dog off, this is what happens. Cement mixer up. New cement mixer. Not used cement mixer. That douchebag, that douchebag that said it was a used cement mixer. Do you see cement on the paddles? Do you see cement on the baffles? Do you see cement on the webbing? No, because it's a new cement mixer. Do you see cement on the frame? No, because it's a new cement mixer. Do you see cement on the yoke? No, because it's a new cement mixer. Do you see cement on the barrel gear? No, because it's a new cement mixer. Why does anybody listen to anything that douchebag says is beyond me? He lies about everything. Unfucking believable. And he has people that fucking follow him every word. Some of them even believe his happy horse shit. It's an amazing thing how stupid some fucking people actually are. I can't see. We're all, okay, we're back in focus here. The sun is preventing me from seeing. Maybe I could turn this around. I think if I turn the whole stand around and then I can change the direction of the tablet, I I might be able to might be able to see what's in the screen itself. Spin this around. Fucking douchebag. Used fucking cement mixer. Fucking on. Oh, yeah. That, oh, that's much better for me. Oh, yeah. That works good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull that out of there. I'm going to get a block of wood. And I'm going to set this up just like that at that angle. What you need to do. And then I'll read the comments. Oh, I don't, that's not going to work. No, oh, yeah, that works fine. Just like that. I'll read the comments. Then I'm going to disappear, get tools. Fucking tools that I don't know how to use, tools that I don't own. That's right. Richard, how you're right about that. Okay. Wish me good luck. Thank you very much, Richard. I, I know that you're not a bad person. I get caught up in sometimes with the comments and not know the exact meaning because it's hard, but thank you, Richard. And it seems like you're a hell of a nice guy. I hope to meet you one day. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disappear now for a little bit. I got to get tools. And...
I forgot something in the house. I'll be right out. But I'll be out in a few minutes, apparently, wherever I put that shit, I put it someplace when I was tired and I forgot where it is. I'm good. I have to check the. I'm gonna check the, the charging rate on the battery. With uh, I have a fluke, a fluke charger. Um, it measures 12 measures from like one volt to to 440. AC or DC. So far, so good. Dr. Page, hi. You were so right that I'm having fun. You were so right about that. Okay, well, uh, this all looks good. I'll be, uh, What I'm going to do first is I'm going to get a bucket of water, two buckets of water out here for grinding, for cooling off the parts, and for uh, cleaning purposes. So that's going to be the first thing I'm going to do. Two buckets of water.
okay, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a uh, a stucco brush in this bucket here. This is gonna be for cooling off the metal that I grind. And then I'm gonna have another bucket of clean water to cook to wash stuff with. Right, that's a safety bucket for washing my face in case I get debris in my eyes. Uh, one thing I want to show you people, and then I'm going to switch the power to the tablet, is I want to show you what I did yesterday. For the cement mixer, I put brackets, rope brackets, so that four or five or six people can grab the cement mixer and move it around and I splice the line onto the nose of the cement mixer itself I found this piece of rope in the ocean in the doggett about about a week ago now and I put a loop in the back so men could grab it from side to side I spliced it here to lock it in place I tied it to the yoke with some piece of garbage that has no strength, but many wraps give it strength. And then on each end, I put a loop. So five men can grab the cement mixer from a safe distance with these grabs and move it. Because other than that, you have to be close up to that footing on the cement mixer and it'll break your toes, your foot, or your leg. So with the rope on it like that, you can hold it from two or three feet away and not be in such a dangerous, precarious position. Okay, just a little thing I did for the safety of the men who will eventually be working here. I'm going to set up a, another electrical plug for the tablet because right now the tablet's not plugged in. I got to go get that. I have to get a different extension cord. problem I have a little problem I have a small problem it's not a big problem it's a small problem I'll fix that problem right here in front of you. okay so normally I wear my blue on time backhoe shirt right and it has a it's a tank top and I put the keys on my tank top I don't have a place to put the keys now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the manly thing I'm gonna take this shirt like a man and I'm gonna put the put my keys like this 
and punch a hole through the shirt. And now the problem is solved. I still have my keys where I know where they are. I won't leave them someplace where I'll forget where they are. And my keys are right here, just where they belong, where they've been for the last 40 years, on my collar. I don't wear them on the belt because if they fall off the belt, you don't hear them. But typically, if they fall off the collar, you'll feel it. Just another little helpful thing. Because I have been abused, ritualistically abused, consistently abused by the little ma'am, sir, to change my fucking shirt, to change my pants because they have paint on them, like I give a fuck what he thinks. But today, I acquiesced. I put on a fucking brand new, different brand new fucking shirt, as you can well see. I feel very good about that. Okay, I'm going to start bringing out the tools. As Lewis Pagan Ponce pointed out, I keep all my tools for different jobs together. This is my cleaning bucket box. Stainless steel brushes and toilet bowl brushes and scrub brushes, motor parts cleaning brushes to get into all the nooks and crannies of what I'm cleaning, which was the cement mixer, but now it will be the Real barrows. All right, that's one. Now I'm going to get some clamps.
I'm gonna get the clamps. The clamps are in here. I'll show you the tools I'm working with today. I'll show you the tools I'm working with today. What real men do for a living. Not fucking men, sirs. Not big fucking mouths that run their fucking mouth all day long on YouTube. What real men do for a living. This is a needle scaler. It has high carbon grade stainless steel mixed needles. And this knocks the rust and dust out from metal. It'll bring it right down to the base metal. It's air operated. It has three adjustments on it. One, two, and three, high, low, and medium. So you can hit the rust hard or easy. So if you're banging on aluminum, it'll you can go easy. But if you're banging on cast iron or steel, you can go hard. That's one tool I'll be using shortly. Works on 120 pounds of pressure of air. Other tools that I will be using is the variations in sizes of C-clamps to clamp metal and wood down to the station where I'm working that I can bind the metal to a like a bench vise but but using clamps and then I can grind the metal and shape and mold the metal. Another tool I will be using There are various sized clamps for different jobs. This is a small clamp. This is a big clamp. They're both C clamps. C is in Charlie clamps. The other tools I will be using are different size vice grips. This is a four and a half inch vice grip and it's a four and a half inch needle nose vice grip. Uh, and these are actual vice grips, vice grips. You can tell by that signature mark on the side of the vice grip, vice grip, that it's a real vice grip, vice grip. And the last tool that I'll be using is an S-wing hammer, 16 ounce straight claw S-wing. And this die grinder, which needs, in a few minutes, it's gonna need a new blade. This blade is still viable, but not viable for everything I wish to do with it. Um, it it's just, it's at the point where it, it serves no purpose. Good morning, my Buntag. Um, it serves no purpose, plus it's starting to fall apart. Now, you could use it like this, but it'll just be not as viable as putting a new disc on it so uh, the disc is basically garbage now I'll bring these tools over to my workstation and I'm gonna get a piece of plywood that I'm gonna build out that workstation out uh, about 18 inches off the side of the station let me make sure I still have a uh, connection here. Okay, I do. Okay. All right, let's see what we got for comments. For comments, I got to get in the shade. L.O.L. Fazio. You coming to MJ's show tonight? He's on in a couple of hours. I. Uh, you want to do me a favor? Albert, I cannot go to his show. My show will be 12 hours. But can you put, can you put the name, his exact name? Because I looked for MJ to flip a show, and I spelled it MJ the flipper, but it didn't come up. Yes, I'm back to building a hotel. So can you put the actual name on there, Michael McFarlane? Good morning, Michael. Thank you very much last night for your most generous donation. I really appreciate you guys coming and watching me do these live streams because we are getting, preparing the tools to build a hotel now, a hotel that which I am supposed to not have plans for, a hotel in which I do not have, know how to use tools to build a hotel with, and a hotel 
which is supposed to be illegal. Watch me do it all. In the next few months, you're going to see some changes around here, to be sure. Sure. All right, I have this here. I'm just going to throw something down on the ground. Okay. Uh, I need one more, one more light duty cord. Okay. Uh, one thing I need to do, I, I'll be out in a moment, momentarily I'll be out. I have, uh, I'll be out momentarily. I want to get some pineapple chunks for a little bit of energy for the morning. And I got to get something to put them in. Well, I don't need anything to put them in. I'll put them in my hand. All righty. Got my pineapple chunks. Got my breakfast ready here. I'll let you guys enjoy me eating some of my breakfast. I have fresh pineapple. The one thing I keep always in my house is fresh pineapple. Like 10 birds just swooped down on that, thinking it was bird food. What will happen to that pineapple skin I just drew outside there? Sometime after 2 o'clock, the goat lady comes with about six or seven goats depends on which goat she brings and she hangs them on my fence on the ropes she puts ropes on the fence because right there Brian Buntag that was a great party the other night yeah are you doing YouTube channel? To the fiesta? What? Am I what? Are you blogging? Yes, I'm blogging. Oh, you have YouTube channel. Yes, the uh, Michael Fazio. What? I, I do a, I'm doing a live stream of working in the doing work in the yard, trabajo. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm showing the how to eat fresh pineapple, which you cannot get in America a fresh pineapple this big is like 600 pesos. Wow. And here, a pineapple this big is 80 pesos. And I'm, I'm rubbing it in a little bit, a little. <laughs> you, I have pineapple and you don't. <laughs> what was your name again, sir? Adrian. Adrian, yeah. Michael. Michael. Did you, you're, you are a free diver or a scuba diver? Scuba diver. Scuba diver. When we went to the, uh, when we went to the boat, yeah, yeah. did you hear about what happened there? Were you there that day? No. I don't think so. Well, what month was that? January, New Year's Day. New Year's Day after the party. Yeah, yeah. Everybody went to the boat, and the lady who was renting the boat changed the price from three thousand to eighteen thousand. Pesos. Yeah, everybody left. Really? Yeah, we all got up early to go to the boat dock and for the free divers. 
the free divers and some scuba divers, everybody brought all their gear, their free diving gear, and the lady said, well, you need two boats, and uh, the meals are not included, and the, the sanctuary fees. So from 500 pesos per person, it went up to uh, 1,850 pesos per person. That including the food. That's a big difference. That sucks, man. That sucks, right. Yeah, because if you're going to pay uh, the uh, environmental fee, just 100 pesos, then the boat is like 500. And how can it's like 1,800 and 50 pesos? They changed the park fees to 250. What? Yeah. Last year was what, 100 or 150 oh. like that, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah. And also to go the turtles, 350. That's bullshit. That's bullshit, yeah. 350 for that little boat ride. And used to be you're allowed to go, somewhere. go around the back and go in the water no more. Now you have to pay the 350 if you wish to go turtle hunting. Right? That's, that's a lot of money for a Filipino even yeah. that's that's what a whole day's pay just to do one thing. That's not fair. So 1800 pesos that's include with the fees. 1800 for the boat for the park fee 250 well no 500 okay. for the boat 250 for the park fee, 350 for turtle hunting. Whoa. That's seven. That's uh, 600 plus 500, 1100, and 500 for food. And you have to tip the captain. That's crazy. That's too much. Where will you go now, Adrian? I'm um, going to pick up some friend because she's bored in her place, so she doesn't want to do that. Okay. You know, there's a fiesta today, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so if, when you bring your friends back, don't forget you hit the fiesta later. I'll try. Okay, amigo. Yeah. Have a hey, nice day. Cebu. It's a fiesta also in Cebu. What's that? In Cebu, there's a big fiesta. This coming. Oh, yeah. Cebu. The Chinese. The no. Chinese New Year. No, no, no. Every third week, every third Sunday in January in Cebu, like one of the biggest festivals in the Philippines. There's a street dance, but I don't know now because there's, you know, the situation of COVID. But before every third Sunday of January, it's like, it's not only Cebu, like people from Bohol, Sikihor, from other islands, they go in Cebu for the street dance competition. I didn't know that. We call it Sinolo. You can search that one in YouTube, like every third Sunday of uh, January. We always do that in Cebu. Wow. But I don't know now if they have some festival now because of the situation, social distancing and COVID. Oh, there's social distancing. Uh, let me ask you a question, Adrian. Serious, right? You have a you have a girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. How can you do jerk with social distancing? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. One meter. <laughs> Your partner is with you together in one place, so no more social distancing. Okay, you have a nice day. Nice day bye bye. I'm gonna check your uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna come back and if I see you, I'm gonna ask you. Okay, Thank no you problem. I would bring your phone. I'll push it into the phone field. Okay. Bye. Okay. Salamat. Okay. So. Um, you saw me eat breakfast. I'm going back to work. I got to get the rest of the tools. I should check my messages. I will check. I'll check the comments because the, now the screen is facing away from me. And then, uh, then I'll get the tools. See? Mr. Willis, welcome. Uh, oh, excuse me, Mr. Willis. Mr. Willis, I have a question, and it's only a question. It's not negative or positive. Happy New Year's. Did you sign back up for my Patreon account and then go off the account? 
or was that some troll using your name? Yes, Mr. Willis, it's no more blah, blah, blah. It's a different perspective. That's correct of your stream. It's a life stream. I like that. I like that, Mr. Willis. So, uh, Mr. Willis, I'm going to, I cannot see your comment or you haven't answered yet if you're still here. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. Willis. I, I saw somebody come on to my Patreon account as Mr. Willis stayed on there about two days. I didn't get a chance to say thank you for your return. And then when I went there, okay, that was me. My, my card keeps getting declined. Freak in Patreon has glitches. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, Mr. Willis, I tell you what, uh, you have been a long-term member of my Patreon account. What I will do is I will, if you don't mind, I will add your email address to eight of my close personal friends. If you say yes, those of my close personal friends will just get the link and the name of an unlisted video and it will be no charge and don't worry about Patreon because you've been such a long-term subscriber and friend of mine on Patreon. So if, if you don't mind, I will add you to eight of my close personal friends. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Willis. But I will send... Okay, so I'm thinking that you wouldn't mind, but I'll wait for that answer. And then... Um, and I'll just send you out the uploads when, when I get a computer... I will send you out the uploads that go to my eight friends that are not members of my Patreon. Okay, sure. Okay, no problem. So so from now on, fuck that card on Patreon. Don't worry about that. And I will just send you out the uploads. Now, I don't have a computer yet. I have to go p purchase one. I'm waiting to go to the city. I'm waiting for orders here. I can't leave the property till my orders come. But when the orders come, I will, um, when I buy a computer, I'll add your name onto my mailing address. Thank you. So now, ladies and gentlemen, whoever's watching, I don't know if anybody is even watching. Uh, I can't see that number. It's too small. Um, I'll go back to work here. I'm going to go get the rest of the tools. Actually, what I really need to do is bring out another extension cord. So I can plug in the uh, tablet. Otherwise, the tablet is going to go kaput.
Where did it go? Where is the other end of the... I lost it. I gotta go get a new one. Hold on. Oh boy. I had a charging unit on the end of that plug and when I brought it outside it fell down somewhere in the grass and now I don't see it. I have three of them but to lose that one that was a high energy charging converting Thing. Make sure it's charging. Hold on. Oh boy. Okay, it's charging. I'll read the comments. MJ Da Flipper D A. Ah. Okay. I was spelling it MJ Da Flipper, but I spelled it. All one, uh, a different, a different spelling. Thank you, Albert. Thank you. I don't know that I'll get there though, because I'm not going to stop my stream. But tell MJ that he's correct. Ed Lippett is a good man, and anybody that puts down a man, you know, I heard that fucking guy talking about Ed Lippett being a scumbag. And he kept saying, Ed, that guy's a scumbag. That guy's a scumbag. But he gave no rational reason for calling Ed Lippert a scumbag. He just said. So basically, because he says something is fucking true, he believes everybody else should believe it's true. That's what's fucked up about that guy. He has what they call magical thinking. Okay, why is this not still not going where I want it to go? Okay, I want it up there like that. Okay. I want it there like that. There you go. Okay, I got it now. Okay, got it. Yeah. He calls Ed Lippett a scumbag. Doesn't say why, just says that he is. So theoretically, because he says something, it's fucking true, that piece of shit.
uh, I had to hump up over 100 pounds, well over 100 pounds of bench to get this board on here. But uh, it's, it's on there now, secure. And now I'll put a horse under this. And this will be my station that I will do my cutting on. Because the cut up here is too high. But this is about the right height. Oh, oh, oh. Feel like fucking Robocop. This is what that the, the makeshift metal boot looks like up close. I feel like Robocop. Okay, I gotta get the air out for the needle scaler. I need a pair of earplugs or I use toilet paper. I need a blade for this machine, a new metal cutting blade, and I need the tool to change the blade. Sharpen up my pencil.
For those of you who don't know what a carpenter's pencil looks like, this is a carpenter's pencil from Ozone Park Lumber from 40 years ago. I had a box of these. I think I have two left. Now this is also a square pencil and it can be used different ways. This measurement between my fingers is a half inch. This measurement at the end of the pencil is a quarter inch. So you can use this for a half inch gauge and a quarter inch gauge. The measurement on the side of the five sided, six sided pencil is one eighth of an inch. So you can use this as a gauge for one eighth half inch and quarter inch aside from it being a pencil most people don't know that about carpenters pencils and they're also mostly these are considered what is called the red and black but this is the private lumberyards version of a red and black pencil Okay, I need the air. I'm going to finish the small wheel barrel first. I got to get earplugs, otherwise I'll be deaf within an hour. I have some gun plugs inside. One of one of my subscribers, one of my subscribers brought these for me from America.
gave me, I think, uh, 50 pairs or more. They're called spark plugs. And they're, they're also used at, uh, for any kind of machinery operation. And he brought me a whole bag of these. Brought me some red and black pencils. Uh, invited me to his wedding. Daisy and I had a great time at his wedding. In invited me for a free meal at his restaurant. And... It, all in all, it was a, a nice meeting of him, and I did video for him at his wedding. I did three hours of video that without, well, you know, each person did their own video, but I uploaded three hours of his wedding video to YouTube. As a, I would have done it for him, with, with him, whether he gave me a meal or not, but it worked out good where he has three hours of his wedding where everybody else was not taking pictures of some of the more important and fun parts of the wedding. I got all of that on camera. And I still have about 10. His name is Rick, R-I-C-K. So, Rick, if you're out there watching, thank you again. I still have these bad boys.
Now I'm going to show you people something, you can believe it or not. I bought this needle scala in the year 2001. Well, that makes it 20 years old. I've gone through two sets of needles because I don't use it that much. But if you put oil, and more specifically, a quality oil like this, or air gun oil or air oil, put two or three drops in in the air nipple, the gun will last 20 years so far if you don't put oil in the gun. The water that is condensated inside the compressor will blow the innards of the gun apart in, in one or two years. But if you keep the gun well oiled, like a real gun, it will last a lifetime. I'm going to be out of your view for a few minutes doing something else over here.
Well, I checked the batteries and they seem to be charged up. So we're going to try that out in a moment to see if the machine will start.
Okay, so for the small wheelbarrow, this is what I use for a pattern. And this is what I'm going to cut this pattern out of. So this fits perfect for half the front of the wheelbarrow. This will be the other half, and then I'll strap that on top of that. So I'm going to check the comments, and then I'm going back to work. So if you have a comment, I'll be reading comments for about a minute. If this is still on. Okay. I didn't know that about MJ the Flipper, but thank you for sharing that. That's right, baby. I don't know. Uh, I, I missed. Okay, I don't know what properties are where, Mr. Willis. But uh, I'm going to go back to work now. Thank you for still being here. I'm going back to cutting that metal. And I, the reason I set the lower inch up is because the, the, the dust was shooting up into my face yesterday. I'd rather have the dust shooting down lower than my belt line.
Okay, well, I just talked for five minutes to dead air. That's okay, it's not the first time. All right, I just talked to dead air space for five minutes, but it's not the first time. So uh, I'm going back to my body and fender work. You want to you want to get pissed off these sneakers are uh, who makes them pisses me off I don't know who makes them Merrill, M-E-R-R-E-L, Merrill Sneakers, 7,200 pesos. Normally in America, when I used to buy sneakers, I didn't have to wear socks because I bought a special brand of sneakers. These sneakers for one hour without socks, and it's already given me a blister in the back of my foot. What? And it's a piece of shit sneaker anyway, Merrill. $140 in the Philippines and without socks it gives you a blister in two hours and with socks you still have to put a bandage underneath your socks otherwise you get a fucking blister brand new $140 fucking garbage Merrill sneakers
time. Hello. Hello. My Buntag. Time for a new blade. I'll check my messages. And then I'm going to go get the tools to replace the blade. I'm back. I don't know who that is, though. Dennis Adam, I am back. This machine go off. The internet here is on and off because of the storms. So uh, right now, that blade that you heard me, you heard banging around, it needs to be replaced. So I'm going to go get the uh, the spanner wrench and replace that blade. So I'll be inside the shop momentarily, and then I'll come back outside. And I'll sit down right here next to the machine and change the blade. So I should be back. I have the spanner wrench and the new blades all in one package. I'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hello? My Buntag amigo. Hello. One of my little friends came to visit. Came to watch. Every once in a while, the uh, the children will come and watch me work, which I find interesting. I'll show it to you. Mayan Buntag, amigo. Hello. You came to watch me do trabajo? Yeah? You came to watch me do trabajo? Mayan Buntag. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Salamat. They stand outside. They stand outside and... I guess they like to watch work being done, especially at that age. Everything is new to them. So, and, uh, and then, of course, at 4 o'clock, they know they're going to get candy, but uh, not before. But a little child like that, probably he's probably just interested to see all the machinery and tools and stuff work just natural curiosity guapo guapo he's giving me a thumbs up so i brought the tools
I brought the tools to replace the blade on the grinder. Grinder is not plugged in. Try not to change blades on skill saws or grinders when they're plugged in. You could do it, but it's just not a good idea. Now here's how I keep my blades for my metal. These are metal blades. And this is called the spanner, S-P-A-N-N-E-R, spanner wrench. It's got two, two tits on the wrench. They go into this ring nut, which is a reverse thread. The way you take that off on the back of these tools is a button, typically. The button pushes in or down and locks up the turning gear. So when I push this button down, the gear stops, locks. See, now it turns and now it's locked. That allows you to take the nut off. The spanner nut. Now the nut, this is the spanner nut on a bad metal blade. It locks into the metal insert in the blade. There's no tolerance, like a 10,000 tolerance. It has what is called a saddle on the nut, a saddle or a lip. The lip goes into the metal insert on the blade and that's what keeps the blade centered. So I'm going to take one of my new blades off of here. These are all metal. I have another package like this, which are concrete. These blades cost, I'll show it to you. Forty pesos. Which is about a dollar. So I keep all that stuff together. Now I'm going to put a used blade on here, which it's not used that much, but it is used. And then I will put um, a new blade on next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. So when you put the blade on, you push the button down to lock up the gear mechanism and then you just, you don't have to tighten it up so tight that you think the world is going to end. It locks in there pretty tight with just a small amount of effort. So now I'll go plug it back in and finish my body and fender work on that piece of metal. If I still have the webcam, if the webcam is still on. Take a look, I'll read the comments, looks like it's still there. 
Okay. I'm back. Mr. Willis, yes. H happy, happy New Year's from John Escape. Yes, sir. Okay, so I hope you guys saw how you changed the blade. And I'm going to go back and cut another piece of metal. I want to get a bucket of water. I like to keep a bucket of fresh water here on hand in case I have to throw water on something.
I'll be coming over there in a minute to get the tablet to show you what I'm doing close up. I'm on my way. I'm going to show you with the tablet close up what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I'm actually forming a new a new nose on the on the uh, on the wheelbarrow. Wheel barrow, B A R R O W, not wheel barrel. Wheel barrow. Okay, the sun went away. That's good for a few minutes. Okay, so this piece here, I had to open up the rolled bead here, and then I grinded a piece approximately so that when I bang it down into the roll, it stays inside there. Now, of course, I have to weld this a little bit, tack it here, tack it here, and then tack it up on top. Now, the second piece here needs to be grinded down a little bit in the center here, because there's a little space here. It'd be hard for me to put a bead across here. So, it, it's locked into the roll over here, and it's locked into the roll over here and here, but I have to take about an eighth of an inch off the center for about two and a half inches. So it's gonna go like that off. Right there. So you mark that up there and mark it up here. And then I wanna get a take that center piece out of there. Now how I open up the roll is with this antique chisel it, and it is a hundred plus years old this chisel and the head is peened over p-e-a-n-e-d peened over from beating shit apart this is my beating shit apart chisel it always has been it's a piece of shit and it, it's a piece of shit that does a beautiful job for beating shit apart so it's got a dull end on it there's nothing special about this thing. It goes into the bead, and you can open up a head on a, on a machine, like take a head off of a 500-horsepower diesel engine. You can use it for a wedge. You can use it for a, uh, a pry bar. And then I have another one, which is really made for machine work to, to wedge something on the bottom of a machine for leveling. This is a leveling shiv, S-H-I-V. But this is really, this was a wood wood chisel, high quality, or what I call my piece of shit, opening up my piece of shit tool. So I'm only gonna put these two pieces on this, and then I'm gonna add one more piece just across the front, like that. And it will only be about, uh, it'll be about, uh, well, 
it'll be about 12 inches 11 and a half inches long and it's only going to go from here to over here so the front nose of the wheelbarrow will be that much stronger now why am i doing that because this wheelbarrow is 112 years old and it's lost a lot a good portion of the metal and i'm going to be using it every day to build the hotel with so i i can't tell the men to go easy on the cement on the wheelbarrow because that's not what wheelbarrows are made for so what i can do is i can redesign the wheelbarrow so that they can work like men so it'll look something like this when i'm done and i'll weld this here and over here and then i'll just cut this off from the other side and weld right across the whole top right across the top and then i'm going to do the same thing on this wheelbarrow i'm going to do the same thing a, a little differently this one's just getting one in the center here like that and then when that gets tough then to the roll because you can see where it's broke here when that gets toughed into the rolled edge i'll weld that and then i'll just weld another piece right on top of it so it'll still be a quarter of an inch of hardened steel hard cold roll steel on the front and then the men can once again they can work like men i don't have to tell them go easy on the cement on the wheelbarrow because they won't no and it's a wheelbarrow is made to throw down on the ground it's not made when you have 300 pounds of mud in this wheelbarrow and you flip it you flip it flip it good now unless you have a, a, a delicate pour you just flip the wheelbarrow and that's why i'm doing the extra strengthening of the nose because this is the part that takes the biggest beating so i'll read the comments that's right john busy at work okay so i'm gonna put the uh i'm gonna put the tablet back on the bench the the tablet bench and then i'm gonna come back and do some more work on the nose of the wheelbarrow. So a lot of what I do you won't be able to see me doing it, but uh, let's see, I, I'll adjust this a little differently. So now, what can you see? You can see what I can see. Okay. All right. So you'll be able to see the meat, the heart of the matter. You'll be able to see that. This is called a rolled bead, R-O-L-L-E, wait, 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 wait for it, wait for it. In here, this section, this part is a rolled bead. Inside is a rolled bead. Inside here, 
is a piece of quarter inch hardened steel. That gives the front of the wheelbarrow strength. However, like I said, this is a 1908 can. And you'll see the rest of the frame after I'm done doing what I do to what I do here, what I have to do here. Okay, inside this roll is a metal bead, a metal round or square stock metal bar. This is 112 years old and the bar is still in here. This is a 1976 SR11, S11 wheelbarrow. And the bead that's supposed to be in here because of the lower quality steel than this 1908 cement wheelbarrow, the, the, bead, the bead completely wore out. I'll show it. Let me take this out of here. Okay, yeah. And I bend this by putting it between these two pieces of wood and I put an arc on it. I should take out my anvil, but it's three hours of work with the machine that's behind me and I can't get the machine started. So I can't do that. I can't drag that anvil with my bad foot. Now inside here is supposed to be a bead, a metal bead. It's not here. There's a little bit left. There's a little bit left of it over here in this section here. It's very thin and over here. But in the center, it's all wore out. So basically, in theory, what I'm doing is I'm replacing that metal bead that's under the roll with a piece of metal strip. Then after I put this in place like this and, and tap it down as far as it goes, then I'll take an additional strip of metal another strip of metal and put it over that similar like that and I'll weld it together from this way and then I'll beat it down up to the bead I'll clamp it and beat it cut off the excess turn the wheelbarrow over and weld it in place from the bottom here like this across the bottom here and the same thing on this side on this wheelbarrow and then when I get it tacked on I'll form it over to the front edge of the wheelbarrow from the top I'll trim it and cut it off thank you John escape another day in the life of Sir Fazio thank you John um, uh, well, you know what, John? The one thing I should ask you right now while you're here is if you could go over to that other guy's channel and make sure I'm doing everything correct. That would be good if I could get confirmation that what I'm doing is going to work. And uh, I've put already did this restructuring here. I put these are nails. These are man nails that go in with a man hammer. These are 10 inch galvanized nails that I welded on here in the 1980s. And uh, they're dock building nails. These are not the big nails, these are the small ones. This is only three eighths of an inch or less. The big nails are a half inch in diameter and 14 inches long. So once I get this tacked in place, once I get this bent the way I want it and beat the, the, the barrow out to the to the metal, I'll paint this inside lip here. So the next step right now is everything is almost done. I'm going to needle scale this in, in this area here. I'll take this piece of metal off of here and I'll needle scale in here. Then I'll blow it out and then I'll paint it with the paint that I have inside on the bench. I'll do the same thing here. I'll get the dusty rust off of here and then paint this up with a, a good metal primer, a good metal paint, no primer. 25% thin with turpentine will be working just fine. 
and I don't know how much more I'll be able to do after that because I don't know we're talking at least two hours work from now to get what what I got done done and it could take longer if it rains or if something else has to be done in the meantime so I'm gonna go oh my god I see super chat money Oh, thank you very much, whoever sent the super chat. Salamat. Uh, that was nice. Okay. Um, looked like a $10 total of super chat. Thank you. Uh, okay. I know John sent me super chat money this morning. I saw that. Thank you, John. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get the air hose out of and start needle scaling the dust rust off around this bead, all the way around. And then if the sun stays out the way it is now, or, or comes out even further, I will drop the paint into the bead, paint the barrow, all the barrow, not that one. I'm only painting the front edge of that. And then on another day, I'll paint that wheelbarrow. But I want to paint the outside of this with one coat, at least today, if it's sunny. And the inside underneath in the barrow itself gets a coat also. So I'm going to bring the tablet back. At least now you know what I'm doing. And on a up close and personal basis. So if someone would be kind enough to go over to that other guy's channel the one that's threatening me with some sort of stupid fucking tribunal that he is posting all over the internet. Someone wants to go over there and check to make sure that I'm doing this shit right. I appreciate that. Thank you. What a fucking asshole. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right. I'm going back over there now to do some work.
Well, I don't know if you saw any of that because I don't know if the machine is still on. And that would have been a shame. Ah, oh, yeah, baby, it was still on. That's nice. I can't see because of the sun. Hold on a minute. Okay. That's right, John. School of Trades. I'm repairing a wheelbarrow. Uh, beating the rust out of the rolled bead, Doug, Douglas. Uh, I'm getting the rust out of the beaded, rolled bead to prepare it for a uh, high quality uh, metal paint that I'm gonna thin out 25% with turpentine, which is one of the next steps. Uh, right now, you can see the sun came back out. That's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to go get the paint right now, and then I'm going to get the turpentine, because I'm just about ready for that step. So I'll be gone a few minutes. 